Hi, welcome to the porch with Kevin Stoda. Again, we're reading from a recent Mother Jones, uh, May, June, 2020. And we're going to look at the article. California, über alles. Okay, über alles is a German word that means overall. And Uber is, of course, one of the gig economy's uh, darlings from the last decade. You see the picture of the driver? This is a green article. It says, driven up the wall. Uh, California's Uber Alice. Uh, tech firms are spending millions to block a law meant to help gig workers. This law is actually needed all over the U.S. to protect the contract workers and uh, we need help of insurance too. Uh, Cardell Calloway was at an Uber Eats driver appreciation day pizza party when he realized he was getting screwed. It was just before Christmas 2017 and Calloway who spent up to 80 hours a week delivering food for various gig companies including Uber's food takeout service had suspected he and his fellow drivers might be getting a bonus. Instead, an Uber Eats representative told the 40 or so people who gathered at a Southern California pizza parlor that the company's uh, pay model was changing. No reason to worry, the rep explained. Yes, drivers would be paid less per delivery, but this would mean more deliveries, so more and more money. We pulled out our calculators, Callaway recalls. We were all barely making $8 an hour at that time. Caught in a flurry of anxious questions from the drivers, the rep got up to order more pizza and never returned. Sounds like a lot of uh, heads of company running away. Uber Eats could uh, leave Callaway and his colleagues hanging because officially it wasn't their employer. In the company's view, they were just independent contractors who happened to use its app or platform to connect with people who wanted take up. Never mind that it established how much they were paid per trip or that its business would crumble without them. Uh, because they weren't real employees, Uber uh, owed them none of the benefits of a real job like overtime pay, workers comp, health insurance, or paid sick leave. This is what I'm afraid the COVID-19 uh, is going to leave us with. Uh, economy like this with the millions and millions of more people dependent on these large apps uh, and competing against each other forever lower wages. See the thing is, I don't want to eat pizza, Callaway says. I want to be able to afford a good meal. So his interest was piqued when he uh, found a note stuck to his windshield from the Mobile Workers Alliance, a group of gig drivers seeking to make tech companies classify contractors as employees. MWA began with 20 drivers in 2017. Three years later, it claims a network of more than 20,000 members and supporters, some of whom include Callaway, pushed uh, California's lawmakers to take action. The result was Assembly Bill 5, which set up a test to determine if gig workers were de facto employees and made it harder for companies to classify them as contractors if their work is essential to the business. Good point. The bill, which receives backing from Senators Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren, passed last fall. The backlash from the gig companies was almost instantaneous. AB5 had to, had dared to question one of the tenets of Silicon Valley. A business is not defined by the service it provides but by, by its technology, its platform. Garbage. Uber is a platform for several different types of digital marketplaces. Lyft is a platform where persons seek transportation uh, to certain destination. Instacart's um, grocery delivery drivers are just participants in a communications and a logistics platform. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram are platforms, so they claim they can't be expected to police misinformation or hate speech. Platforms exist in a state of sublime innocence, free from any responsibility beyond providing the infrastructure for connecting people. Kind of like parts of our government, uh, military, uh, police force, and uh, corporate 
uh, large corporations. Before AB5 went into effect on January 1, Uber and Postmates, another delivery app, sued California to stop the law. A federal judge denied the company's initial request. Uber, Lyft, Instacart, DoorDash, and Postmates have spent $110 million to promote and gather signatures for a proposed ballot measure that would essentially exempt many gig workers from the law. Why don't they just pay the workers that $110 million? Golly. The companies formed a group that recruited what it's called what is called app-based drivers to serve as spokesmen for the proposition which will almost certainly appear on the November ballot. Op-eds written by drivers associated with the campaign called it a matter of flexibility. Not so says Calloway. When he began driving for Uber in 2014 at age 60, he was living in a town in, Mo in the Mojave Desert about an hour and a half from Los Angeles. He was, in theory, free to decide where and when he worked. But if I want passengers, I have to drive to Los Angeles to get them, he recalls. At first, he made the 140-mile round trip drive every week day every weekday but when he realized that was a losing proposition financially he started living out of his car what kind of flexibility is that he asked since january state lawmakers have introduced no fewer than 30 bills to soften or repeal ab5 lift has put two million dollars into california's for independent work and independent expenditure committee working to unseat pro ab5 legislators the law's unintended consequences have also ticked off employee and employees in other sectors. In November, the California Trucking Association sued state officials arguing that independent truckers regularly carrying loads for the companies should stay contractors. Hmm. Maybe this is going on too long. Um, journalists have taken to their natural habitat, Twitter, to complain that AB5 hurts freelancers. I bet it doesn't hurt that many. SB Nation, the sports site owned by Vox Media, blamed the law when it laid off its entire California workforce. Hmm, excuses. A day later, organizations representing freelance writers and photographers sued the state attorney general calling the law unconstitutional. Unconstitutional. Assembly member Lorenza, uh, Lorena Gonzalez, AB5's author, says there are legitimate concerns with the law. Or, or the bill, but chalks up much of the pushback to Republican theatrics and corporations paying for disruption. But she says the law was necessary. In the midst of a pandemic, gig workers have been driving and making deliveries without protection for long-term unemployment or if a family member gets sick. And even if AB5 hadn't become law, many of the same companies now complaining would likely have been forced to make changes due to a 2018 California Supreme Court ruling that set a near identical standard for defining independent contractors. So they're just trying to make what the courts already said into law. So far, there aren't many examples of how the new law has helped gig workers. Gonzalez says Governor Gavin Newsom seems to be unenthusiastic about the law. If I was holding out for this governor to enforce it, she said, I think I'd be holding my breath. Uh, that's why they need the law versus um, just having um, the, the Supreme Court of the state support the workers. There have been so many small victories for gig workers. In September 2019, the San Diego City Attorney took Instacart to court under AB5 for classifying its shoppers as contractors. A judge recently agreed that workers picking up customers' groceries likely perform a core function of the company. The changes Calloway fought for won't help him much now. Earlier this year, his car, which had 155,000 miles on it, broke down. He's living in an RV back at home, too broke to afford a new car, and unable to drive for, uh, for work anymore. The gig economy promised freedom for drivers, but it left Calloway worse off than when he'd started. They say it's innovative because it's on a platform, he says. But when you're cheating everybody, how innovative Vedev is that Jacob Rosenberg? That's a good story. Um, we'll also note none of my business is a sub article here. None of my business. Uh, it says here Uber, Lyft, and Instacart aren't the only companies that don't want to de be defined for what they actually do. I'm surprised at some of these. Audi says we are a tech company that happens to make cars. Hmm. Zappos. Uh, we're a service company that just happens to sell shoes. These are their own statements. 
Big River Steel. At our core, we're a technology company. We just happen to make steel. Shia Homes, uh, we're a service company that just so happens to build homes. Wild Alaskan, Wild Alaskan is a tech company that happens to sell seafood. Hmm. Delta Airlines, we're a customer service company that just happens to fly airplanes. Hmm. WestJet, a digital company that happens to fly airplanes. It doesn't say two. Uh, Fidelity of all things. Fidelity, a technology company that happens to be in financial services. Hmm. Sweet Green, we want to go beyond a food company and become a platform. Metals.com, we're not really a gold and silver company, we're a technology company. Uh, Facebook, we're a technology company, we're not a media company. Marriott, we are a media company now. Marriott, is that a hotel chain? And they own a lot of hotels? Uh, Jewel, we're not a big tobacco company. They want to be a tech company, I guess. We work. We are not a real estate company. We are a community company. White Castle, we're not a hamburger company. We're a slider company. McDonald's, we're not a, not just a hamburger company serving people, we're a people company serving hamburgers. Equine uh, Express, we are not a transportation company who does horses, we are a horse people who do transportation. Honorable mention goes to Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos who said in 1999, we're not a book company, we're not a music company, we're not a video company, we're not an auction company, we're a customer company. Okay, somebody's got to pay for all this contracting eventually. I First time I ever worked at, for, as a contractor was in um, Germany in 2009. It's one of the most difficult experiences of my life. I don't recommend it for anybody. Um, I think there must have been another time I was a contract person. Uh, but if it was, it was while I was doing other work. I suggest um, everybody get ready for a change and start paying at least what they did when I, um, a few years later, I taught in Japan, I mean Taiwan, and I was hired to a company to teach in a public school there, and they gave me full benefits and everything. And that's what I would suggest you get, not what I got in Germany, without the full benefits uh, covered. All right, you take care. Uh, this is Kevin Stoda on the porch. Uh, wishing you and your Uber drivers and other people like this poor guy a good day. Remember, uh, tech firms cannot continue to claim they are not corporations. They're just platforms. Okay, it's just not going to work. We need to have legislation everywhere that makes this clear. And um, if they're going to do part-time jobs, this, the, com the country has to give a basic health care for everyone. Okay? and other benefits. God bless you from the port.